Hi everybody. So today uh, we're back in Epcot and we're going to Space 220. I actually remember what it was, then. Space 220. Uh, not missing Space Restaurant or anything like that, but Space 220. So we're going to go uh, have a spot to eat, uh, obviously take a look at the surroundings. Uh, it's supposed to be uh, really good in there. Don't know about the food, it's okay from what I hear. Um, but it's more the, uh, the environment that we're going for and trying that out. So this one here has no voice or has a voice, um, but it's more like Pinocchio or something. Can you speak? No. Uh, uh, I can't even do it. Yeah, so you got a squawk from Sarah just, and uh, we're meeting up with uh, Evangeline, Lewis, and uh, Sarah's dad, Harry. So we're having a bit of a family, family lunch on this one, and we'll catch up with you soon. I know I'm for the first time in space. Great. Thank you.
going to add the rocks yeah. to the trench. <laughs> Airlock broken, we all get <laughs> dragged down into space. Is that good? Thank you. Okay, so we've just done uh, our um, eating over in space up at uh, Space 220 restaurant. So we went up into space, uh, had some food and came back down to Earth. Um, what do you think about it then, if you can say anything at all? Did you enjoy it? Yes. Yes, is the answer. I'm going to interpret this. Go on. Food was better than I thought it was going to be. Okay. Um, I probably won't rush back. Yeah. Um, it is expensive. Yeah, there were five of us dining and it came to, without discount, approximately $395. Um, that was uh, a number of additional drinks. Well, eight additional drinks in there, so that probably came to about another $90 on top of the um, food anyway, and it was $55 for two courses. Yeah. Um, personally... Plus tip. Oh, plus tip, yeah, plus tip, so it's uh, about $400 plus tip. Um, so, to me, well, not, not only to me, very expensive. Uh, I actually found it slightly underwhelming, being honest. Uh, it wasn't uh, anywhere near as immersive as I thought it was going to be. Um, depending on where you're sitting, um, we were close to the edge, um, so we didn't get to see much of the centre screen, which isn't a problem, you still saw bits, but you get to see the staff just being staff at the sides of the restaurant where you're not supposed to go in etc. Yeah I didn't see that because I got me back to the... Yeah but I saw it um, and it's nice the big screens were nice but also you very quickly you notice that the uh, it, it seems to be on uh, a very short loop so there were things that were repeated quite a lot and considering we weren't in there for any uh, for, for longer than a typical amount uh, of time to eat oh, two no. courses about one hour I would have thought that they'd have less uh, of a, a, a repetition of what's coming up on screen, but there was definite repetitions there happening. Whether it's, I don't know, whether it's AI and the AI was just doing it quick, who knows? Um, but I, I actually found the whole experience underwhelming, to be honest. I think the lift, lift up and the initial entrance in, the lift down, are the best bits. Yeah. Um, if, 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 if you want to go and experience it. Definitely go and experience it if you can. As long as however many you're paying for, you can't think of a better way to go and spend that money. Um, I would try and get reservations, sorry. We'll try and get reservations. Reservations for the lounge 
Rather well, than the uh, yes. Rather than the restaurant, because the lounge you can pick and choose what you would like. If you just want to go up for a drink, go up for a drink, or if you want to have like one item off the menu, yeah. you can do that. So the lounge is probably a better experience to get get the actual full experience rather than using the prefix menu for either lunch or dinner. Yeah. Okay. With that, I'm going. Yes. See you soon. Similar to the one in Paris. I think this one is slightly better. Um, again, it's half in French, half in English. Um, yeah, just it's in That's all I can say. I can't say anything to think about it. So, our plan for this afternoon was to leave Epcot, mm -hmm. which we have done. We have left. By the International Gateway and go to the Yacht and Beach Club and hire a pontoon boat for an hour. Except now it's raining. It's possible thunder in the area. Sorry, just rain landed in my eye. Um, oh, there we go. There's the thunder. So 
Well, it's very unlikely that we're actually going to be able to do that one. But we'll wander along and look at the prices anyway. Um, maybe we'll come back and do this one another day. Probably in the morning. When it's less likely to thunder. So we've just walked out of uh, Epcot. Uh, we've got the usual hours worth of rain, yeah, it's 25 past 3. Um, so we're just coming past, which one's the blue? Coming past the beach club at the moment. And obviously in the distance there you can see the yacht club. And over there you've got the boardwalk. Maybe that's the dolphin. And then we've got the, the swan in the background of the boardwalk and coming over to the dolphin. And in between... In between that new building behind the dance hall there, which hopefully you can see me pointing, that's the Swan Reserve. But we'll just come back round to the Beach Club. Very impressive looking buildings. And obviously really nicely done. But what else do you expect from Disney? One of the advantages of it raining is the beach is deserted. And you can see that the, you've got the ship for the Yacht and Beach Club swimming pool just there, which looks pretty empty as well, water slide, um, because I'm guessing they've all been told to come out now, the thunder's arrived. But there is blue sky above, so hopefully it won't last too long. So this is the, uh, the Disney famous Yacht and Beach Club pool at the moment, uh, empty because of the thunder, except for of course, don't know if we can see them just here. The two resident ducks having a nice hassle-free swim in the pool just. And then as we just scan back around this way, you can see there is the uh, the water slide, pirate ship water slide. So the Yacht and Beach Club is exclusive to um, the residents of the two hotels. Even if you stay in the other Disney hotel, you're not allowed to use this one. No pool hopping. No pool hopping to this pool. Um, so it's obviously, it uh, can be a big pull uh, for some people to come and stay at these two resorts. It's the only one so, in Disney property with a lazy river. So do, I'm not sure if you need it, Sarah, but it's the only one in Disney property with a lazy river. But if I just take a look, even though it's raining at the moment, if I just scan around with you, you can just see just how pretty and well set out this part of the resorts are. You've got boardwalks as I mentioned before. Obviously you've got the lighthouse which is also a docking point, a docking uh, area for the boats. And then you've got the, uh, which one's this one? The Yacht Club. And again, just like the beach club, beautifully done. Beautifully done uh, exterior buildings and the interiors are also uh, very nice as well. We were going to hire one of these pontoon boats, um, but the weather's put paid that for now. That's okay, we'll still have a walk around. It's been a few years since we've come around this area, so we'll have a walk around over to the boardwalk as well. Hopefully grab a drink and a snack while I'm there. So we're just standing outside the uh, area where you come and hire the pontoons on there, the Sun Tracker pontoon at rentals. It's $45 for 30 minutes or $90 for 60 minutes with 10 guests maximum. And it says you must be at least 18 years old to operate on there. So um, that's fair enough. But if you've got your 10 guests, even if you had the $90 for 60 minutes and all your 10 guests were able to chip in, what's that, Ten, uh, nine, $9 per guest? So it's not bad for a pontoon boat on there that you're keeping out for uh, an hour. So these are the pontoon boats, not exactly small. Um, obviously comfortably fit 10 on them. Uh, you've got the two seating areas. Hopefully we'll be able to show you when we take one out a bit later. But you've got two seating areas on there. Uh, what was it, Afton? Four. Four, Afton four, there you go, you see. Sarah hasn't been watching Below Deck at all. Yeah, Sarah watches Below Deck, so educational reality TV going on there. Um, whereas obviously with me and uh, my expertise of boating, you could tell or, straight away I knew what I was on about. Or, alternately, you could have stern and bow. Stern and bow, there you go. Sounds like a pub. Um, I'm going to go to the stern and bow for 24 hours or 24 hours? Good God, what type of drink would that be? That would be awesome. I'm going to go to the stern and bow for an hour. Sounds good to me. 
uh, just for <coughs> start again. Just for any uh, runners out there as well. If you're staying at a Disney hotel, there are running trails around most of the resorts. This is probably one of the prettiest trails. So the trail around Yachton Beach Club, around to the boardwalk, it's a completely circular loop and it's 0.8 miles. So you'd have to do quite a few loops to get in any kind of decent mileage. This part that we're on at the moment, from Epcot, around to here, this forms part of the official Run Disney race tracks as well. So you can always pretend you're actually part doing the Disney Marathon if you wanted to. If you wanted to extend your run and you can run along to um, Hollywood Studios and extend it that way as well. It's a really pretty little loop. Well the boardwalk uh, resort is pretty empty. I think everyone must be in Epcot today. And we stayed in Crest of the Wave before now. One of those, uh, one of those rooms just on my right up here. One of these somewhere. Can't remember. That's my age for you. So now we've got out of boardwalk. We'll show you, we'll do the scan the other way around. So we've got the boardwalk. As we move around, got the beach club in the blue, and we got the yacht club over there. Yeah. 